tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Welcome to New Life in Christ broadcast. My name is Gerald Walton, and I am the elder and pastor of New Life in Christ Christian Center. And I just want to invite you and welcome you. This broadcast is where Jesus is exalted and we bless his holy name. Before we start today, I'd like to give thanks to God for these individuals and, and the body of Christ. That God has blessed us with many members, but with one body. But I'd like to shout out a thanks to John Pittman. San Francisco, may God bless him and his household there, family, and Tony Snyder lives in Tennessee, I believe, and, and other saints that I, I don't see that much often anymore, but in spirit, I know they're about their father's business, amen. So today, uh, our purpose is for me to edify you, comfort you, and exhort you in the things of God so that you could be all of God, what he called you to be. Amen. So I'm a builder. Amen. I'm a builder of people, and God's children are builders. We edify, we comfort, exhort, and encourage people to follow Christ, to be like Christ. Amen. To be imitators of God. Amen. To be obedient to God. Amen. To learn from Jesus. To be rooted and grounded in Christ. Amen. So this message is going to comfort you, encourage you, edify you, uh, and just help you in the things of God. And my prayer and desire is that you be rooted and grounded in Christ, and that you that he be your first love, amen, and that you walk in his love, and you walk in his faith, and walk in his power. So I want to read a prayer reading today, found in Romans 15. Now we, when I read the prayer reading, I'm believing God for you that this will be important to you and your family and your loved ones. You know, so uh, some may refer it as the spoken blessing. But I believe with the intent to impart the word of God. But see, the word of God says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So I believe God, this word is going to be sent to you and bless you you and your family, your whole household. Amen. Because God's will that our whole household be saved. Amen. So here in Romans 15, verses 5 through 7 reads, Now the God of patience and consolation, Amen. May the God of all patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. Amen. So may God bless you, and that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Amen. So may that richly bless you and your family. Amen. Amen. So today's message is on the importance of faith in Christ. Okay? Jesus is the resurrection and the life. When you receive Jesus, you get a new life, a born-again life, a resurrected life. Amen? Will you walk into the newness in Christ? It's not a religious thing where you, you know, where you join the church and that's it, or you just get involved in activities of the church. That's helpful. But first things first, the importance of having faith in Christ and trusting in Him. Amen. Because man may let you down, and they will let you down, because they need Jesus. That's why they'll let you down. So you don't need to be uh, discouraged if you've been hurt by someone in the past. Could have been uh, anybody pastor, uh, it could have been uh, anybody that may have hurt you, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, you go through that, and people cheated on you, lied about you, you know, talked about you, you know. Well, that's, that's 
life. Life comes and takes away from you. But the good news is a new life in Christ. And the good news is that when he died on the cross, he took all, everything that you may have experienced that was unfair and not good, you know, or bad even. And I'm, I'm hearing that some people are walking with hurt. And I've been hurt before. But it teaches me to grow up in Christ. It teaches me to put my trust in God. It teaches me how to forgive those who did hurt me. It teaches me to forgive, uh, ask God to forgive me for those I hurt. <laughs> you know, you know. so uh, this walking by faith in Christ Jesus means that you are redeemed. You have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You have been rescued from all things that happened to you in the past. But also, if you are persecuted now, maybe you're going through some struggles and hard times now, the good news is that Christ knows about it. And the good news is that's why we need to have our faith in him and learn from him. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Let's go to Matthew eleven twenty nine. We're talking about the importance of having faith in Christ. So in Matthew 11, 29, because Jesus knows what we're going through or what you've been through. And, um, you know, I remember when I was, uh, I, I used to live at the uh, University YMCA and uh, uh, God sent somebody to help me. And I used to say, oh, you don't understand me. You don't understand me. <laughs> And what it was is I lacked faith in Christ. And God sent people to help me. Uh, thank God for Ron Mosby and uh, also uh, Charlie Winburn. Put people in my life to build me up in faith and, and have my faith in God. Amen. But what happens when people, now that you're born again and you're experiencing uh, things that may be unpleasant to you, what are we to do? Well, I'm going to share with you the good news. First, we need to have our faith in Christ because that's why God the Father sent him. So he can show us the way, the truth, and the life. So he can show us the Father. That when he spoke, he said what his Father told him to say. Oh, oh, that's the revelation right there. Amen. So when you read the Bible, you're just not just reading the Bible. <laughs> you know, just reading, you know, you, you're actually intently hungry and thirsty for God. And he will answer that thirst, answer that hunger. But here in, in uh, Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, thank you, Lord. Uh, we'll go to 28, the one above, because that's very important. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So Jesus has said that you can come to him. He understands. He knows. Amen. But here the king of kings Look at it from this perspective. The Lord of Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. But he comes into this world when he lived in this world to serve. Amen. Not to be ministered to, but to minister. And while he was here, he knew that they had some turmoil. That's why there's nothing different under the sun. Now, we live in 2020 now. I would have not known we would be in 2020. I mean, the, the numbers just don't, you know, it's kind of baffling a little bit because of all those 19, 19, 58, 59, 56, 57, 75, 80, 85, you know, those good old days. Now we're in 2020, and there's a lot of things going on, a lot of adversity, a lot of storm and storms and, and unpleasant things. When Jesus came, there was things going on too now. Amen. But listen to what he says. He said, come unto me, 
All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest. Rest is the uh, refreshed from the mind of all the, all the problems and troubles of the world. God's will is that his children, his people be refreshed. God's will is for his children, his people to, to have the rest of God to enter into a rest. And how we enter into a rest? We dwell in his presence. Because in his presence there's peace. In his presence there's fullness of joy. Amen. In his presence is confidence, assurance, and strength. It says seek his face early in the morning and seek his strength forevermore. See, God don't want you to live in your strength. He wants you to live by his strength. He wants you to live by his peace. He wants you to have his peace, his joy. Jesus said there's nothing in this world to be compared to be compared to the glory of God which shall be revealed in us. See, God is bringing many sons to glory. I'm prophesying that. He's bringing many sons to glory. Amen. These sons are going to glorify him. These sons are going to worship him in spirit and truth. These sons are going to bring his presence into the world. You say, what does his presence look like? It looks like holiness and godliness. Amen. It looks like loving your neighbor as yourself, being kind one to another, tenderhearted. It means uh, following Christ as a dear child of God, being an imitator of him, loving one another, loving your neighbor. It really deals with a lot of behavior. It's, it's where God is has come to take over in you in your life so let him take over amen now some people want to hold on to their life he says die to it so that he can live and dwell in you and dominate you and influence you with a heavenly kingdom mindset with a heavenly nature, amen, of behavior and attitude, amen, and acts. We call it acts of kindness. It actually be the acts from heaven, from God on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord's Prayer, amen, manifesting God in the earth. So that's why it's important to uh, have faith in Christ because God sent it his son. He said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him when he was in the earth. And then sometimes Jesus can do no mighty works because of their unbelief. So unbelief is an enemy for a child of God. Unbelief, fear is an enemy. And the Bible says we're not to be ignorant of his devices. Ignorance of his word, ignorance of his will. You know, so God wants to be uh, the Bible says sober and diligent, knowing that your Adversary walketh about, has a roaring alliance, seeketh about whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. So God is calling his family, assembling his family, calling his family to be steadfast in the faith in Christ. Christ is the rock that we, that I stand on. There's no sinking sand. <laughs> Christ is the foundation of faith. Amen. Our faith should be in him and faith, this faith, it works by love. The love of God. Amen. So the, it's important that we walk in love toward God and toward man. So it's important for us to learn the truth of God's love. God is love. Amen. And having faith in his son is having faith in him. This means you trust him. Amen. It also means it pleases him that we talked about last time we met. Faith pleases God. And he's, he rewards those who diligently seek him. So faith is the foundation which is of importance when we have faith in Christ. Okay. We talked about last time we met here about the foundation principles of Christ 
mentioned in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. The second principle is having faith toward God, faith in Christ, faith in Christ, faith toward God, faith toward Christ. That's what it means. Not faith toward your God and faith toward your job. Well, your job goes under. Or, you know, just some people who don't know Christ, they give up and, and, and kill themselves. It's unfortunate. I was just really unfortunate. The devil is a liar. But when we have faith in the risen Lord, because he's alive, then we live by faith in Christ. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 7. The importance of living by faith in Christ. Okay? See, I believe it's 7. Isaiah chapter 7. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Uh, let's see. No, it's Isaiah 9. Excuse me. <laughs> Isaiah 9. Now, it's a prophetic word. <clears throat> so we all need to be current. Amen. By the spirit, what God's doing in the earth. Amen. Amen. Well, it says, for unto us a child is born, verse 9, verse 6, chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. Mm -hmm. In order to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hallelujah. So that's why it's important to have our faith in Christ. Because he is prophesied right here who he is. And his kingdom shall, there shall be no end. He's going to order it and establish it. And he's going to do it with zeal. And he's a God of justice. Amen. So we put our faith in Christ because he's the God of justice. He said there's injustices in the world. Well, Jesus told us that there will be. He told us that. He said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That's what Jesus said. In this world, you're going to have tribulations and, and some uh, wicked things because of the prince of this world. But then he told us to be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So God is telling us to live a uh, faith in Christ, which is a resurrected life. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And a resurrected life means that you live according to his kingdom principles and sayings and teachings that come from heaven. Hallelujah. Come from heaven. Amen. That's why Jesus, he was in the world, but not of the world. And he tells us the same. He said, live by the principles that my father told me to tell you. Because heaven and earth is going to pass away. But the words that Jesus preach and teach to us and we put in our heart, they live forever. It's an everlasting word. It's an everlasting kingdom. And then we realize we're here for his plan, his purpose, his pleasure, his glory. And we go about living a godly, holy life unto God, not unto man. To God be the glory, amen, not to man be the glory. Man wants that spot. It can't have it. And people want it because they don't know the risen Savior. If they receive God's love, his son, they will receive the love of God and they will be content and happy and blessed <laughs> and highly favored. Amen. So we, the children of God, the sons and daughters of God, we have to tell the truth of the Father's love to those who do not have God the Father in their life through Jesus Christ. We must walk uprightly. I didn't say arrogantly. We must walk uprightly, serving the Lord with gladness. Amen. Being about our father's business. Rising up in the morning and saying, I rise and shine and I give God the glory. I rise. That's what I do. 
I rise, I wake up, I rise, I shine, and I give you the glory, Lord. And I give you my undivided attention because I love you, Lord. And I want to learn your way, Lord. Amen. So the foundation is Christ. When we have our faith toward where it should be, toward God, toward Christ, then three things happen. Number one, it gives you life. It gives you eternal life. And then John, let's go to John uh, chapter 11, 25, 26. It, it deals with the story of, of Lazarus. But I'm focusing on verse 25 and 26 uh, for our purpose today relating to the importance of faith in Christ. And I hope this will comfort you. It says in verse 25, chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said unto her, because this, this lady thought that uh, her brother or close or relative, friend, he said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That stands today. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in him, though he were dead, yet, oh, he's talking about Lazarus, though, yet were he dead, Yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. So what is Jesus saying? He's the resurrection of life. If you believe in him, you shall never die. You'll live forever. So that's why John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's the importance of having faith in Christ and living by faith in Christ is God wants you to live a resurrected life, which is a new life in him, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Treat your old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So that's how we live. We live in the newness of Christ. And that newness of Christ is now and then forever. Because Christ is preparing us for eternity. He said, why am I here? Why am I still here? To glorify him. Why am I here? And going through all this. So that your faith will be granted, uh, grounded, rooted, and grounded in him. <laughs> in Christ and no other. Not America. Not in the government. Not in a one man. It's, a, it's very unfortunate. People believe put their trust in one man. The president. That man needs prayer like everybody else. And I encourage you to pray for those that are in authority so that you can live a quiet and peaceable life. Pray for your president, vice president. Pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done with this election. You know, see, you got to remember, God is sovereign. It's he who sits on the throne. He can allow what he wants to allow. And didn't know the end, because we don't know the end, but he knows the end, because he's, he's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the beginning and the end. He's Alpha and Omega. So we, we're to put our trust in him and what he would have us to do in his written word, called the word of faith. And Christ reveals the Father. And Christ reveals heaven to us. And Christ reveals this is how you live. This is life. Bitterness, anger, strife, contention, quarreling, murder, and all that. There's no life in that. There's nothing but death. It's the spirit of death. Sin has nothing but death in it. Yep, sin is nothing but death. It, it ain't no, no fruit in sin, but corrupt fruit, and that leads to death. And then James it says, once you know, people sin because they draw away from the word of God, and then sin comes and they fall in it, <laughs> you know, you know. God wants us to be diligent and faithful and true because he's diligent, faithful, and true. And that's something I like to have a friend who's faithful and true. But he wants me to be faithful and true too. But that's how I learn. I learn from God the Father, and this is how we learn. He's faithful and true, and he has begot us. So we learn of him. That's God's will that he's always wanted for his children to learn of him. And, be, and just walk in him. Walk with his presence. Walk with the glory. It's still today. Walk with the 
glory, to walk with his presence. Amen. Usher the presence of God. Show up in places and understand the Holy Ghost is with you because he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And then learn to follow the, the after the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you have received the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you can receive it by receiving the gift like you receive Jesus. Amen. You can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, the spiritual language unto God, not unto man. Amen. First and foremost. But that's part of God giving you his fullness. God wants you to have his fullness. He wants you to have his best. He wants you to have all of him. And I'm telling you, I want to give all of him back. I want to give all of myself to him. He want, that's beautiful, isn't it? He wants to give me all of him, and I want to give him all of me because that's my Father in heaven. That's God the Father. Amen. He wants his children to give all of themselves to him because he want, he's going to give you all of him. Amen. So the importance of having faith in Christ, it gives you life. In John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you may have life and life more abundantly. Amen. So that's why Christ came, to give us life and life more abundantly. And I'll tell you another reason why Christ came. Christ came to destroy the works of the devil that we see going on every day, all right? You really hear about it on the news. I should and pray that they start telling more and more good news of how God is moving. God is moving. God is moving. I'm telling you, he's moving. And God wants us to uh, be a, a, a moving, evolving people of God, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Amen. <laughs> That, that sought uh, to seek out the praises of God. Amen. Looking for praisers and worshipers. Amen. They will worship him and praise him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. And also, if we look at John 6 and 63, Jesus, the, the reason why he's the importance of the foundation, the importance of faith of us, why it's so important for us to have faith in Jesus, in John 6, 6, uh, 63, excuse me. In John 6, 63, we'll read this importance to this message. And the importance about this message is that you have your faith in Christ. Amen. He is the head of the church. He is the head of the body. He is the head of all principality. Amen. He is head of all. He is Lord of all. Amen. So it's important for us to have our faith in the creator. Amen. The shepherd. Amen. And, and, and the father's son. Amen. Whom he's well pleased. It's important to have our faith in him. You know, this song uh, says something about people need Jesus. People need Jesus. And that's what they do. People need Jesus Christ. Amen. The spirit of Christ. Here we go. John 6, 63. It says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, Jesus is saying, the flesh profits nothing. Then Jesus says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the importance of having faith in Christ is that you receive life, Zoe, endless, amen, an endless life, a life from God himself. Amen. Amen. And he wants that to continue to, to just go through you. Amen. Like a power source. But you got to stay connected to the power source. You know what happens when you take the plug out the, out the outlet and drop it on the floor for a fan or, or uh, whatever. You know, you know what I mean? You, you plug it in the outlet where the power is. Then you take it out. Then, then it stops. God wants us to stay plugged in to his son, the head of the church, the head of the body. Amen. The bright morning star, star the, 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 the governor, the wonderful counselor. You know, Jesus is grown up now. He's all grown up sitting on the right hand throne of the father, full of majesty. Amen. Full of splendor and glory and majesty. God wants us to stay connected with Jesus. 
Jesus says, sheep, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger they won't follow. We got a whole bunch of voices in the world today. So it's imperative that you seek God first. Seek him first. Be diligent with him first. So that you can get to know him. And so that you can know his voice, his word. So you take his word, the word of God. Amen. The word of God. And plant it in your heart. A grateful, thankful heart, which is good, good ground. And so you can water that seed. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And watch the Holy Ghost work with you and help you understand how much God loves you and why you're here. Amen. Now, the second thing is relationship. In which God, the importance of having faith in Christ is that you, it has to do with relationship. Oh my goodness, relationship. It, it has more to do with than just read a scripture, close a book. I remember when I was in college, I brought my Bible with me to college, and I put that Bible on the shelf, and I forgot all about the Bible and the Word of God and devotion. Boy, I was out there having a good old swinging time, you know. But I'm like Moses. You know, when God delivered Moses, said, I'd rather dwell with the people of God than dwell in a, in a season of sin and wickedness. You know, sin can be fun. Oh, man, I love, but it, it could be not of God, and it wasn't of God for me. It was just taking me down. Look gradually, taking me down, taking me down. Down to who, I, who I'm not and what God did not intend me to be and live like. Until Christ. So I, so I open my heart, receive Christ, and receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I have never looked back. I use it now as a testimony. Amen. What does it say, what does it say in 2 Corinthians 5, 17? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Hallelujah. All things become new. And that means a lifestyle, a relationship is related to a lifestyle. Not just Sunday when you go to church. Everybody say, go to church. I am the church. We are the church. We assemble. We forsake not together to assemble ourselves as often as we ought to because some do. I'm the church. <laughs> you're the church. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we say go to church. A lot of people mentally think that's a building and a time and and and. Actually, you really see the reality of God's people, that they need Jesus. You go to church, you really see it's a hospital where even the clergy, everybody needs Jesus. And that's why God is calling his church to be a house of prayer. Humble themselves before the mighty hand of God that, they, that he may exalt them in due time and use them for a mighty work, a mighty, mighty work. So I place all that in God's care. Because he's going to do what he promised. But a relationship and a commitment. When you receive Christ, you become unified. You, you are in union. You're united in Christ. I don't have time for anybody, anything else with that magnitude. Uh, I don't. I don't have time for the organizations and things like that. You know, you know God bless them. They're doing good things. But uh, my heart and my passion is in Christ where it is to be. And then serve in different capacities. That's right. Serve. Be a servant. Amen. Be a servant leader. Amen. Because if you th if you want to exalt yourself, I'm the best, I'm the greatest, you come it down because Christ never had that intention even in himself. He came to serve. Now he is to be exalted because he's God who came in the flesh. He's not just human. He was a, he was deity. But so I'm just trying to say that my relationship with Christ, if this helps someone, is more important and more of value because it is he who teaches me how to love, how to forgive, how to walk in godliness, how to be fearless, how to conquer, how to overcome. How to be a blessing. 
Now, where else I'm going to get that? In the books, in college? Man already tended and got their hands in on that, and they didn't even pray about it. They just said, well, this is what you do. This is you, you, In my opinion, you should do this. In my opinion, do that. Said, okay, well, <laughs> that's man. And it may be good, but is it God? And that's how you have to discern, determine and discern. It may be good, but it might not be God. It may be good for me to marry this guy, but it might not be God. That's not the one God chose. That's the one you chose. For these late for these sisters in the Lord. God didn't tell you to choose you. God said, look and wait and wait on him. And God has sent him. The man of God, that is. Amen. Now, let me go on to number three, outcomes. Um, what can you expect having having your faith in Christ? There is a lot of wonderful things that you can expect that will come. Um, with uh, that um, having faith in Christ I know David did David David says I pursued my enemies and overtook all of them and I tell you <laughs> that's a warrior I tell you, you know and we all have enemies we have enemies from within you know habits and, and but when you have your faith in Christ you will overcome them you just have to believe you have to receive and believe God. You have to do uh, what Jesus said to the disciples about, uh, he was teaching them a lesson about a tree that wasn't bringing forth fruit. And uh, that's Mark 11, 22 and 23, 24. We go there. Jesus will teach you how to conquer, overcome, amen, and be courageous. You know, in the scripture, Jesus says, fear not. Only believe. He said, fear not many times. And when you walk in God's love, fear can't have no place because perfect love casts out that fear. But if you didn't know that, then you say, oh, I'm scared. Well, the only reason why you scared you is you don't have the word of God in you and you've been listening to other voices. And all those other voices, they, they, they come to steal, kill, and destroy you. Yeah, those, your words are powerful. But let's look what Jesus says about words. Mark eleven twenty two, and it says, and Jesus answering, this is the lesson after the fig tree, because they, you know, Jesus told it to die because it wasn't bringing no fruit. So, uh, if you want to read the whole passage of scriptures, Mark eleven verses eleven to twenty uh, twenty six, but twenty two says. About the lesson of the fig trees, Jesus answered, said unto them, Have faith in God. That's what Jesus is saying to us today. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. I might as well read the other two verses, 25. And when you stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any. This is an important message for somebody out there. If And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. So forgiveness is a love attribute. Forgiveness is a blessing. Because when you don't forgive, and you hold it, hold it to your heart or hold it inside, you got baggage. I'm telling you, you got a bunch of waste that God didn't intend for this church, temple, people. Never intended for you to carry because he took that on the cross. He took on shame, guilt. He took on unforgiveness. He took all that. Jesus took all that on the cross so that you would be free. So it's always quick. It's always good to quick to ask for somebody to forgive you. And it's always good for you to forgive those who, who trespass against you. Forgive them. Forgive them. Let them go. Let them go. 
don't don't try to figure out how god going to get them and all that stuff that's that's not godly that's not love amen so that's why it's important to have faith that you can speak to the mountain and say whatever that mountain may be whatever that problem may be so faith the importance of faith in christ has to do with believing receiving believing and and doing but in the process of believing and receiving saying speaking to the mountain amen speak you know as for me and my house i'll give you an example as for me and my house we're going to serve the lord and we're going to serve the lord with gladness amen so i took that scripture put it in my heart i declare it i confess it i believe it i believe it's god and i thank god for it so that's an example of the importance of living by faith. You 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 don't want to be saying you believe and you confess, uh, but you believe but you confess the opposite. Faith can't work there. Faith is what you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, and they are united. They are interconnected. Interconnected like worship and praise. So when you believe, you confess what you believe. And what you confess, you confess what you believe. That's why you can locate people by what they say, because out of the abundance of a heart, a man speaketh. That's yeah. Yes. So that's why it's important to have faith in Christ, because he'll teach you what the Father told him to teach you how to live in the earth and to prepare you for eternity in the process. Remember, Christ came to give you life and life more abundantly. Process is, he's the potter and you're the clay. He's removing wrinkles and things that don't belong in your life. That's why we don't quit, we don't faint, we don't give up, we endure. We run with patience, which is endurance, the race that is set before us. Amen. Life is a race. It's not a quick sprint. People want it to be a quick sprint because somehow people want to be, I'm first. I'm finished. <laughs> I teach at, I used to teach at the school and these kids love to say out loud, I'm finished. I'm finished at first to be the first. But no, in the kingdom, it's a day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And run with patience the race that's set before you. Patience is endurance. Amen. The race is not given to the swift or the strong, but they that endure to the God is working himself in you so that you can be displayed in the world. Isn't that a beautiful, isn't that an honor? You say, wow, I'm ready to get out of this job, ready to quit, ready to go, ready, you know, ready to go to heaven. God ain't ready for you to come to heaven. He's not finished with you. Once you learn of him and learn his ways, then you're going to say, oh, I want to be a blessing. Oh, I want to step out in my yard, say hi to my neighbors. Oh, I want to be a blessing on my job. I want to just say, hey, have a great day, you know. Because you bring in the presence of God in a dark world. We already got a lot of dark things going on in the world. Murder and shooting, black on black, black on white, this, that, flesh, flesh, flesh. Flesh. But Jesus said, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak, they spirit and life. Amen. God came to give you life, life more abundantly in his son, Jesus Christ. That's why our faith in him is very important. No one comes to the Father but by him. Why? Because he so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that he sent his son not to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn people. People are condemned by their own sin. There's no condemnation to the people of God, the children of God, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. There's no condemnation in that. Christ took on that. People in the world are condemned because of sin. And they don't want their sin, they don't want to be reproved with those sins. God will correct those sins. Thank you, Jesus. He corrected my sin. 
And thank you, Jesus, for continuing to correct me. Thank you for tilters and sh shakers. Amen. Man, I've been tilted and shaken and corrected. And it's a blessing. Because I don't want to uh, believe I got all the answers. <laughs> no, no, no. God puts people in your life to, to show Christ to you. That's how you can be encouraged with your brothers and sisters, how they walk, how their walk with the Lord is. I'm encouraged by it. I'm not jealous of it. I'm encouraged, and that's how we all should be. We should be encouraged by people's obedience and how they know the Lord and how they display the Lord and his goodness. You know, you learn from it and you grow. And, and it's the self-same spirit in Christ. Just didn't know that, and someone else knows, and they reveal it and share it with you. Amen. Finally, the outcome of having faith in Christ is, first of all, it gives you victory. Amen. You having faith in Christ will give you the victory. And the Bible says, nay, through all these things, you're more than a conqueror. So that's who I am. Because the word of faith and faith in Christ tells me that. I'm more than a conqueror. In Christ Jesus. Now, in Christ Jesus, there's no other way but in him and through him. Because the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. So, it's in Christ Jesus, I'm more than a conqueror. But here, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, we're going to read. It says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I'm going to read that again. Oh, listen to this. For whosoever is born of God, born again, overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So having, in, having faith in Christ, you have the victory. Matter of fact, the battle is the Lord's and the victory is yours. And the victory is having faith in Christ, having faith in God, faith toward God. There's the victory. And then step back and watch and see God move on your behalf. Then you say, but God. So, you know, it might look bleak. Uh, this is looking pretty bleak out here. But you should always say, but God. What does God say? What does God say about it? Hallelujah. What is in his word? Because he wants to speak to you. You know, you can have giants all over you. <laughs> you know that song. Although there be giants in the land, I will not be afraid. He brought me out to bring me in to the promised land. Amen. Um, so victory when you have faith in Christ, you have victory. I, I read that, and I'm going to read it one more time because it's so good. We need to all reflect on this. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Well, that means anything going on. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Then uh, having faith in Christ means you're, you're being fruitful. The fruit of the Spirit is operating in you. That's a beautiful thing. That's God's will that his sons, his children, be fruitful. And the fruit of the Spirit, that's what I'm referring to, is in Galatians 5 and 22. God wants you to live and walk in the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit are the attributes of God himself. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So God, the outcome of living by faith in Christ is you're going to be fruitful. He is the vine. We are the branches. The father is the husbandman. Or who the husbandman is. All right? And what he does, Jesus purged. Someone says there's a purging going on. Amen. That's prophetically, that there may be some truth to that. When you purge from a tree of fruit, uh, from this perspective, what I'm talking about, bring forth much fruit, God wants you to bring forth more fruit. So, God wants you to be purged, or he prunes so that uh, so that more branches of other fruit can come forth. But we have to abide in the vine. And the, and the vine, and the words of the of Jesus must abide in us so that we can bring forth much fruit. We're ordained to bring forth fruit. Amen. God ordained us. So we're to be a blessing and be joyful in our God and, and enjoy the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is seeing someone else blessed. That's, that's one of the greatest blessings. You be being thankful, happy, and rejoicing for somebody else. Amen. And then the outcome of having faith in Christ Jesus is so that God may be glorified. Matthew 5.16. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Matthew 5.16 says, Jesus is talking, and I'll go up to 13 because it's all good. Ye are, and he's speaking to the disciples of the followers of him. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is this for good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city uh, that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. Neither do men light a candle and put it on the bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give light unto all that are in the house. Then he says, let your light so shine before me that he may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. To God be the glory. That God be glorified in our life. Which means our conduct, character, and behavior. In the home, in the community, on the jobs, and wherever God graces you and sends you to go. Behavior, attitude is one of the biggest evidence of fruit. Spiritual, spiritual fruit, that is, spiritually speaking. Because those who are led by the Spirit, they're the sons of God. So the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, needs to, because uh, it's the fruit of the Holy Ghost, that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, must dwell in you and the Word of God dwell in you so that it, you can produce forth fruit through your actions and your behavior. Not just your words, you know, what you say, what you say, but your doing. Amen. You're the way you think, the way you carry yourself. Amen. Amen. And uh, finally, Hebrews uh, eleven twenty three for the day. To the next time we get together, Amen. Hebrews eleven, verse twenty three through thirty, the outcome of having faith in Christ, the importance. This importance, you know, outcome is, you know, some five people say, who won the game. Who won the basketball game? Everybody want to know the outcome. Who won the football game? Who won the basketball game? Who won? Well, in Christ, we've already won. So we just live the gospel. We live those words that has already given us the victory. The word is Jesus. Amen? So Hebrews. Let me go to Hebrews. Here we go, 11. Last passage I, I read right here. 11 verse 23. Y'all be patient now. 11, 23 through 30. Let's read. Because when you talk about faith, you say, what's the outcome? 
or what is living by faith in Christ. Now, this is the testimony recorded by the old saints before us. But it says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come into years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, Moses, but he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the, e which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. And by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. So by faith, uh, God's people subdued kingdoms and had great victories. And we had the victory in Christ. So whatever challenge a situation God says I give you the victory and our and, and your victory is in my son hear him obey him that's the victory whether it's uh, uh, whether it's finances whether it's healing whether it's uh, anything you go through you see a lot of people trying to figure out and do it on their own strength only to find out they don't have enough. And then some people are avoiding God and they they having all this pleasure and fun. Only to find out they're empty. Only to find out that's that's not life. Life is in Christ. So I encourage all of us to to recognize our faith in Christ is the life of God. The peace of God. Amen. And because of that, uh, we have the victory. Amen. So one day I'll talk about who we are in Christ. But I'll leave you with this. In him we live, move, and have our being. Amen. Through Jesus Christ we have our being. We live and move and have our being. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you for being with us today. Uh, may God richly bless you and your family. And uh, I wish you above all things that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. See, that's what the good news is about, sharing. You know, freely we receive, freely we, sh we need to give. And if you'd like to know more information about this broadcast, but also our local fellowship, uh, New Life in Christ Christian Center's phone number is 513-257-9121. That's 513-257-9121. And you can email us at newlifeinchristcc at yahoo.com. See you next time, and God bless you with the love of Jesus. Amen.